You know, you know, always uh, after I give a talk, I am correcting a bit my plan according to what, uh, according to the back reaction from the mm -hmm. talk I gave. That's why since we spent some time on simplest loss of money and space, I decided to discuss all loss of money and spaces, okay? <coughs> and uh, also And also I'm going to give two new, okay, no. First I raise and then I'll speak. So you see, I decided, I decided to postpone a bit integrable systems. Mm -hmm. And basically the reason is that uh, after the momenta, that, that after the momenta, we got last time in this configuration spaces. I'd like to sit here a bit before this would uh, go away from your brain, okay? One second. Mm Hello? -hmm. <laughs> Хорошо. Дашенька, через 5-10 минут перекресток. Mm -hmm. so, uh, so there is another reason. Another reason is uh, somewhat unexpected. Uh, and this reason is that uh, when we were doing this stuff with Manin, we were doing it in some generality. And uh, now I finally realized that, uh, that my construction with Frankel gives a nice representation of this very general stuff that we studied with uh, Manin and it also fits very natural in the framework was that I'm explaining right now. Okay? Mm -hmm. So, so, so uh, Andrei, uh, could I ask, uh, so I, I sent you an email with this question yesterday, but I, I just, a question to the last lecture. So, okay. yes. uh, uh, which is, okay, what, what is the space of states attached to a circle in, for, for the A model, or what's the corresponding Frobenius algebra? Because there are, I guess two candidates for that. And one candidate would be uh, the cohomology of the target with the quantum product, if, if we believe in field state correspondence. That's one candidate. And the other candidate ca comes from this uh, picture with the loop space that you were giving uh, yesterday. And that would be, uh, I guess, the um, in invariant forms on loop space invariant with respect to the vector field that you wrote. So, uh, so actually, first my comment to your question. Mm -hmm. When you said something endowed with, with the quantum product, mm -hmm. it, uh, it's not about the space, space of states, it's about the direction. I know, I know. That, that's why I, asked, why I said Fabinius algebra. It's about Fabinius algebra. Yes, but uh, so when I describe space, uh, it's not said uh, what is the structure. Okay, so yeah. of course, of course, uh, consider the space, of course, the space of loops. Mm -hmm. so, so, so there is a space of loops, and uh, of course, uh, the Dirham operator on X induces. Uh, the RAM operator on loops. Mm -hmm. Now, now you may uh, ask about its cohomology. Okay. Mm -hmm. So the most natural question is uh, cohomology. And uh, 
it is clear that uh, that there is that there is a vector field on this space, and this vector field is rotation of a loop. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So you may uh, say that uh, cohomology could be retracted to the cohomology of the space of constant loops. Mm -hmm. So the space is big, however, uh, cohomology is small. And uh, is it the same as invariant forms with respect to the vector field that you wrote, invariant forms on, uh, on, on loop space? It's probably the same, right? Uh, so it's uh, yes, but it's uh, but it's the um, yes, yes. So then, okay. So, uh, so, so then you, those... can retract, so you can retract. So so there are so there are forms. Yes, yes. But uh, so okay. So so in this sense, uh, the basic space is, is the same in both models. It's just the cohomology of of x. But in one case, you re you regard them as constant loops. But um, okay, so the vector field that you wrote was it a Morse vector field? Uh, was it a gradient vector field on the loop space or not? Yeah, this uh, this is it's a good question. This is gradient like, and this is uh, this is discovery of Floyer that mm -hmm. yes. Then, by the way, Sen, so. Mm -hmm. So your teacher maybe also studied this because Arnold studied this. So, so since I know that your teacher, so well, so let us write the homomorphicity equation. Sigma equals to zero. So, so the, so here we have the equation that is. Uh, if we, if, we, if we write it in real coordinates, so this is a vector field. So one can show that uh, this uh, that such vector field does not have uh, limiting cycles. Uh -huh. But so you want to say that somehow constant but, loops are uh, like. However, how, uh, yes. However, this vector field, uh, in general, uh, but but this vector field could have periodic trajectories, and that's why here it's not exactly Morse. Here we have actually Morse Novikov theory. Because uh, it's because uh, the would be Morse function is multivalued. So people mm -hmm. know how to treat such things. Suppose you have uh, a Morse like field that has this would be Morse function, but that is multivalued. So then you consider. Uh, the universal covering mm -hmm. uh, then you consider universal covering and go from copy to copy so more so in, in Morse case you have the following df over d okay mn So here you have a gradient, and you make a vector field out of it with the help of metric. Mm -hmm. But it could be that here you have not a gradient, but closed form, closed one form. Mm -hmm. So this case was considered by Novikov. So idea here is to do the following. Okay, so so okay, 
So let us discuss this, this issue a bit. Mm -hmm. Is there some way to write down this multi-valued potential? So if it is, so, so let me first explain how to work it, how to write it. So, in, so, uh, so if f, of f is multi-valued actually means that you have the vector field that is like this, omega yeah. m that is closed. So what, so what, uh, so what Novikov proposed? Novikov proposed to do the following. Novikov. That you consider X tilde. That is universal covering of X. Mm -hmm. So pi one of X tilde is uh, one. So here I write it as a multiplicative group. Okay, mm -hmm. so it means that all omegas that on x tilde, all omegas are exact. However, we do not know how exact they are. Okay. What do you mean how exact? Ah, the potentials. <laughs> yes, we don't know the potential. However, the fact that omega is exact could be checked. Mm -hmm. So, so it is possible to. Oh, sorry. So it is possible to differentiate, differentiate mm -hmm. to check that it is exact. Yeah. However, it's not that easy to integrate. Mm -hmm. So, uh, I. I so here I'm talking about general Morse-Novikov theory. Mm -hmm. So here all omegas are exact. And now consider trajectory. Mm -hmm. I'll call it Morse-Novikov. Mm -hmm. So trajectory on X, so, so, so we, we have a trajectory in X and it may happen that this trajectory is periodic. Mm. However, on X tilde, the trajectory comes from this point X to the point X prime. That is a copy. Mm -hmm. But still we have a uh, but still we have a Morse theory here. So we would like to compare it here and here. Mm -hmm. To do this, we put uh, some kind of a grading. Mm -hmm. So that matters how far we are going this way. Yeah. So they actually this grading is just a module, sorry. So we don't know the level of the point X. So you see, uh, in Morse theory, we, we can, uh, there is the level, the height. Yes, yes. It is the value of Hamiltonian. Mm -hmm. So here, we don't have the height. We, can, we only have relative heights between X and the X prime. And it is clear that difference of heights is the integral of omega along this cycle. So, so mostly, so, so, so this is mostly what happens. Mm -hmm. uh, there is subtlety here. Subtlety here is that uh, X, so we would like to study theory on the compact space. Yeah. You see, when we say that Morse trajectory starts at X and, and ends at some X, mm -hmm. 
we uh, we assume that uh, the manifold is compact. However, uh, mm -hmm. however, we know that when you have uh, non non compact manifold, trajectories could go to infinity. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes. So. Uh, So X tilde could be non-compact. Mm -hmm. So we have to, so in studying this, we have to study different cases. Cases when trajectory starts here and, and ends somewhere here or goes far away. And there is a, is a parameter. So it's uh, the amount of these cycles that we have. And uh, typically we take generating parameter Q and we multiply trajectory by the number of cycles that trajectory does on X. And this is exactly what people would like, would call instant on number. Mm -hmm. So to be, so to be precise, if if we'd like to discuss this issue, we need to study not uh, not Morse theory but actually Morse bot theory. So Morse bot theory uh, is, a, is a variant of Morse theory where the vector field is not of general position. It could have critical submanifolds. So where it vanishes. So trajectory goes from one critical submanifold to another critical submanifold. So this is Morse bot. Mm -hmm. Now we need to unify the Morse bot theory together with Novikov theory. So we start at critical submanifold, we go around we wrap this cycle several times, we end on, uh, on critical submanifold. Okay? Mm -hmm. So now let us uh, let's try to see these trajectories in the problem that we are studying, the problem yeah. of holomorphic maps. Mm -hmm. So critical submanifolds is where the vector field is zero. Mm -hmm. Constant maps. So, so constant maps actually it's not a point. It's a bot critical submanifold. Mm -hmm. Then we start here and we go all the way around. And then we end. So it so it so we so this trajectory actually looks like you start at some point X on the target, mm -hmm. and here is some point X two. Now, what is this Novikov's Q par parameter? Mm -hmm. Novikov's Q parameter is the following. It is the period that you have here. So now let us see what this, what this period is. Okay.
So uh, let me let me convince you that in this case, that in this case, this is done. Uh, so everything could be. So this is done uh, on the Keller manifolds. Here on the Keller manifolds, this thing is done uh, by the Keller structure, and this period is nothing but the integral of the Keller form. You see, it's because this J is also made out of the Keller form. Mm -hmm. Can we actually flow from one constant loop to, to a constant loop at a different point? By sure, the that's what we are doing. Mm -hmm. Just imagine, uh, say, identical map from CP1 to CP1. No, but to another I, point, to another point. Okay, zero and infinity. Zero goes to zero, infinity goes to infinity, it goes to another point. I'm, I, I'm not hurrying you up. It takes time to imagine this. No, sorry, so I don't understand this. Yeah. Okay, okay, yeah. So what happens? here here you pick pick up here this logarithmic coordinates mm -hmm. so you consider this cp1 as what i like this one c star and this one so that's how you compactify so here you see trajectory of the loop loop appears at infinity, at minus infinity in time, as a constant loop. Then it grows, then it moves, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. then at plus infinity in the time t. So here we have t and sigma. Mm -hmm. It shrinks. Yes. So we can see this in identical map. Yeah, that is of that is of degree one, but we can also consider degree D map. Mm -hmm. So beginning could be anywhere. So beginning, so it's a zero on the source CP one could be any point here. Mm -hmm. The final loop could also be any point here. And uh, along this way, we have a holomorphic map along this line. And uh, this was first uh, discovered and studied by, I think it was discovered and studied by Floyer. So main uh, players there, as far as I heard, I never read the original papers because uh, <laughs> I was too young. Oh. But Andre, sorry, I, th I think I have a problem with with this uh, flowing from one point to another point because that would mean that uh, the sort of partition function for a cylinder in a model is not identity. If if we say that the space of states is uh, uh, well forms on constant loops, if you can flow partition, to a different partition function for a cylinder. If you want mm -hmm. to say non-integrated, of course it's not identity. It's uh, it is the um, it is the Euler number of the target. No, here I, I mean it should be an operator from the space of states for a circle to space of states for a circle. You say cylinder. Oh, oh sorry, cylinder. Cylinder. Ah, yeah. I, I thought torus. Uh, yes. So, you I thought right. it, so it's not identity. But then. Um, so what? Then it should then it fails uh, Siegel's axiomatics if it's not identity. It, it, or, it, well, what? what uh, or maybe so, it's identity. Uh, in cohomology somehow 
Yeah, I, I don't know, I'm just a bit puzzled there. So let, let, let yes, so, so first of all, cohomology. But we are already in cohomology, so yeah. Ah, wait. If you consider this, if you consider Moore's board theory, mm -hmm. there is, of course, uh, a differential that is on the board manifold. So in this way, it's not, uh, so if, if you have a point, so you see mm -hmm. all functions on, the, on points are cohomology, right? Mm -hmm. Yes, yes. However, uh, functions uh, on uh, both manifolds are not points. Actually, we don't, uh, we should not consider, we should not consider uh, functions, but uh, rather differential forms. Mm -hmm. So. Oh, oh, I see what you're saying that this point zero and point infinity from which they are, okay, they are homologous. To what? To each other, they're not. To, to each other, to each other, yes. It's, uh, it is not, uh, it's not a proper way to say this because mm -hmm. uh, they belong, in general, they belong to the, so let us, let us discuss a bit what mm -hmm. theory, okay? Mm -hmm. Because, uh, because it is the case where you have not uh, contracted uh, to the finite dimensional system. So in the bot case. Mm -hmm. mm, let me think. So in the bot case, you, you have C1, you have C2, everything inside, inside X. And there is, there is a flow. Mm -hmm. So, so differential Q is of course the round differential on X. Okay? Mm -hmm. The homotopy is of course contraction of this vector field. Mm -hmm. So Hamiltonian is LV. Sure. Okay, so, so if you have a distribution on C1, it is definitely the zero. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So you have so you have many zeros of Hamiltonian. You have infinitely many states that are zeros of Hamiltonian. Mm -hmm. Yes. And uh, so uh, you have the space of differential for on C one. Mm -hmm. Maybe, uh, maybe then you are asking a good question. But so you're saying that this omega of C1 should come with a differential of its own. You see, I mean, it, 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 it may come, it may not come, but you are asking the following question. Uh, so uh, H, so so things goes from C1 to C2, yes? Mm -hmm. so, mm -hmm. so your question is, in which sense, no, you, you're asking proper question, in which sense differential forms on C1 go to differential forms on C2? Right. Because uh, you see, I can clear, so differential forms that are delta functions uh, well, I can I can act on them with uh, 
LV. Yeah. And, the, and they would stay there mm -hmm. on C1. And in, in, in gradient trajectory, we are supposed to displace it a little bit, right? So, so that it starts flowing. However, however, if you displace, if you displace a bit, it goes mm -hmm. uh, to C2. So, mm -hmm. so here there are some kind of analytical issue. And uh, when we studied this with Frankel and Nikrasov, mm -hmm. we somehow resolved this issue, we explained the way in which there is a uh, attractive cell, so it's called the uh, left symbol, and then there is a repelling set. Mm -hmm. So the full manifold has to be described as uh, as a collection of these uh, left symbols. Mm -hmm. So uh, let me put it this way. Yeah. What 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 definitely is true, correct, mm -hmm. and has no problems, is mm -hmm. uh, the evolution for the finite for, for the finite time t. Yes. Mm -hmm. When you want to take evolution for the infinite time, mm -hmm. and when you try to make singular distributions. Mm -hmm. You need to play with limits. Yes. We actually, we did study this problem with, uh, with Frankel and uh, Nikrasov in the model case, together with observables in the middle. Mm -hmm. And uh, but not in terms of Siegel definition. So mm -hmm. so it is not identical operator. You see, so so you are you, so you are making the following puzzle. Mm -hmm. So so here is the Hamiltonian. Mm -hmm. Hamiltonian is like this. Here is mm -hmm. Q. Here is G. So, th so there are two things. There are differential forms that uh, that are distributions on C1, okay? Mm -hmm. yes. And naively, we may think that they are uh, that they uh, are annihilated by Hamiltonian. Mm -hmm. And that's why they do not flow anyway. That's the standard story of Morse theory. If yes. you are sitting directly at critical point, you are not flowing. Yes, yes, yes. So, uh, so yes. So, so it's this. And there is also uh, okay. So yes. So, so, so they are not flowing. Yes, mm -hmm. they are not flowing. Yes, maybe it's. Uh, So uh, you see, in this case, uh, the kernel of H. Okay, yes, the kernel of H is differential forms on this uh, on this set. Mm -hmm. I, th I, I think that I think that's how. How it should do, how it should be written. However, uh, these these uh, these are singular, and uh, and there is a subtlety how you define limits once again. Yes. Because. Uh, okay, so. But I guess maybe part of the point uh, is that unlike the usual Morse theory, there, there is another component to Morse differential, which is just the RAM differential on C. Yes, but uh, yes, 
Yes, of course, of course, of course, there is such a differential, yes. And that is related to my original question, I think, of how, yeah, why one critical, uh, why, why the constant loop at one point flowing to another, to a constant loop sitting at another point ah. is not at odds so, with us. So it's, mm -hmm. uh, once again, a single type of situation where, where all vector spaces are replaced not not Siegel, it's uh, so called uh, higher Siegel. All vector spaces are replaced by uh, by comp by complexes, and then this so so it's a complex, yes. Right, 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 right. So when you when you start posing a question, you need to mm -hmm. to make a formulation. So if you have differential forms on the loop space, etc., and if you have a Hamiltonian, so Hamiltonian shrinks the space a bit. Yeah. Yeah. But not to cohomology. Because in principle, one can even consider theory with zero Hamiltonian. It's also possible. Sure. Well, you're saying that this goes in two stages. So first we consider the uh, zeros of Hamiltonian that gives us forms on X, but not the cohomology of X. Yes, for forms mm -hmm. on C. Ah, yes. In this case, forms on X, yes. Yeah, yes, because, well, X is and LX. That's, maybe. And that's exactly how people treat it in conformal field theory. In conformal field theory, Hamiltonian, or would be Hamiltonian, is related to L0 plus. Conformal yes. dimension. Sure. And uh, yeah. L0 plus. So uh, it, takes, it takes all local fields, if mm -hmm. you wish. Mm -hmm. Two local fields uh, of uh, dimension zero. So local fields. Mm -hmm. Something like this. These, ha these have higher dimensions. Mm -hmm. This has zero dimension. In, in so-called instantonic theory. Mm -hmm. However, if you deform the theory, with the pi 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 bar with some metric mm -hmm. then and l not here would be the laplacian mm -hmm. and you can shrink further so you are deforming theory and you shrink more So, oh, oh, the, you, when, you, when you consider the kernel of L0, I see. Mm -hmm. Yes. So, when you study, so when you study gromov witten theory, mm -hmm. you may study it in, uh, sorry, what's called gromov witten in sense of Kansevich Manin and also uh, Lostev Nikrasov Frankel, or Frankel Lostev Nikrasov case. Mm -hmm. we, we specifically studied instantonic theories that are mm -hmm. locally like this. Mm -hmm. Where fields of, the, I, I was describing them like two months ago, where fields of zero dimension, where, where all uh, functions and differential forms have zero dimension. Mm -hmm. And these, these fields correspond exactly to this uh, differential forms on the 
what critical manifold that this constant loops. Mm -hmm. So, so it is this relation. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, okay, uh, thank you, thank you. I'm, I'm sorry for derailing but, your... But point. you see, so after we discussed this mm -hmm. right now, mm -hmm. it is appropriate for me to discuss extension of commutativity equation that was not in my paper with Manin, mm -hmm. uh, but... Uh, because uh, actually, okay, I will admit why it's not in our in our joint paper. However, it is correct, and moreover, this gives uh, <coughs> this gives new observables, but uh, not only it gives new observables. It also gives new equations that are satisfied by, by these observables. Okay. Mm -hmm. So what I will tell you in several minutes would be not only how to pose new problem, but also probably how to solve this. Okay. Mm -hmm. Although I have not worked out uh, explicit examples. And uh, this may be very desired. Mm -hmm. Okay. Let us come back to the cylinder case. Once again. I was not going to explain it, but it fits so natural with your answers to my questions that, no, with my answers to your questions, that, <laughs> that I want to mention that here, okay? Namely, consider the holomorphic map. Just in the setting, just in the setup that we were discussing last yesterday and today. So here are points where we have evaluation. And here we have the propagator e to the t l plus plus i sigma l minus plus of course dt g plus plus d sigma g minus okay Mm -hmm. Or here we see Dong chain. Now, now here, now here we We can consider several cycles. Mm -hmm. So, uh, so uh, we have this space. And, uh, and actually there are potentially several cycles. Sorry, I, I, I'm not sure what, what you mean. Ah, so 
so this is differential form. This is differential form on C star to the power n over C star. It's clear. Mm -hmm. It is clear that uh, so so the, the so if we compactify it in this way, mm -hmm. we see that for n equals two, it is CP one, and this is something more complicated for higher ends. And it mm -hmm. is quite natural to integrate it along this cycle. However, so cycle, you mean the, uh, the, the fundamental cycle or the complexification oh, cycle oh, or? Oh, 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 okay. It's a good point. Here, here we may integrate along the fundamental cycle. Mm -hmm. And uh, this integral, so, uh, and, and this integral of a fundamental cycle means that you fix position of one point and you integrate with respect to position of the rest of the points. Mm -hmm. So integration of a fundamental cycle, cycle is correlation of O zero at some point one. together with the integrals of O2 of Z i D2 Z i over CP1. And the number of this integral is of course n minus one. So so here we have n uh, so I I put here I zero. So here we have such structure. N minus one, two observable, and uh, one zero observable. Mm -hmm. Now, we may consider it differently. To consider it differently, We may consider the same form, the same form as a more theory on the loop space. Okay. Uh, how? Let me see. Just. Oh, uh, oh I see. So just, sigma just, consider, just consider this. So, so there is a loop space. Yes. Mm -hmm. So, so there, so there are, of course, there are forms on the loop space. So, <clears throat> so I would like to take the same expression and to mm -hmm. rewrite it in the following way. That, that I know pretty well from quantum mechanics. <coughs> but I also have another thing. I sigma L minus plus D sigma G minus. Mm -hmm. So let's understand the meaning. First of all, 
what I'm putting here. I am putting here a variation at the point of the, of the loop, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So what is the loop? Loop is a map, S1 to X, okay? Mm -hmm. So when I have differential forms here, I can consider the pullback to S1, okay? Mm -hmm. So E of omega belongs to differential forms on S1, sorry, okay? And this is my observable. Okay, so, so what this means, okay, mm -hmm. so this, this piece stands for shift of sigma, shift of coordinates shift of code of position on a cycle. Mm -hmm. So, <clears throat> so what can I do here? I could do several things. I can evaluate this differential form on some cycle on this one, okay? When I evaluate at some cycle on this one, it would mean that I take out this term. So you mean integrate over a cycle? Uh, oh, sorry, so, so no. So I can, I can evaluate this form on the, on the, so if I evaluate it at the point, sorry, there are two types of cycles. Yeah. I can either evaluate, <coughs> now, now I need to evaluate this on this one. Mm -hmm. I can evaluate at a point and I can evaluate or, or I can integrate on the fullest one. Two things. These two things, these two options correspond to different operations that I'm doing here and to two different enumerative problems. Mm -hmm. If I evaluate it at a point, I would say that I consider a map such that the point with fixed sigma coordinates maps to okay so so was this omega be dual to some cycle c okay maps to c so let me consider not all points not all differential for forms, but differential forms that are plan carry dual to cycles or delta function on cycles. So when I evaluate a fixed point, it means that this po uh, the, uh, that point with the fixed value of sigma goes to C. When I integrate over S1, it means 
Another enumeration, enumerative problem. It means that that uh, point with point with arbitrary coordinate maps to C one. So this case means that I take O one that I am integrating only over DT So actually, it means that I'm going to study, in this case, integral not over the C1, but along the line, sigma fixed. It is legal to consider this. In the second case, I have what I had before. integral O2 I Z D to Z. So actually the cylinder, the cylinder representation says that there are several options. Fixed is one thing. integrated like this and also integrated along the cylinder. Three options. Okay. So at the moment, let me concentrate on the difference between this and this. Sorry, but your, your well, integration on S1 corresponds to another one dimensional integral, right? This integration on this one comes from this place. So no, when I you... integrate over, so when I integrate over S1, I take this sigma integral. So it means that from the point of view of, from the point of topological quantum mechanics, higher topological on loops, There is observable phi corresponding to the line and observable G minus phi. Note that these observables always come in doubles. like this and like this. And, and therefore, you might say that you study topological, higher topological quantum mechanics just with observables of two types, this and this. Sorry, I, I, no, I, I'm not sure what you're talking about. I mean, in, 
in topological quantum mechanics, you should also be able to take a uh, commutator with G plus, which would give you a uh, one form along the, of course, uh, along the of time. Co of course, of course. So what, so what I'm trying to explain here, of course, mm -hmm. what I'm trying to explain here, that these, that from the point of view of topological quantum mechanics, these are uh, observable that you put a point at fixed time. At fixed time. Mm -hmm. And then, and then let me call these observable. Phi. So I, I need to, I need to pick up some definition. Let me make this definition. Okay, I, I let me call this phi of the type one and phi of the type two in order not to mix it with other definitions. So, from the point of view of topological quantum mechanics, I should consider the following, or I may consider the following points. And among these points, I have some observables. Some of them are of type one, some are of type two. Mm -hmm. And here we have incoming state and here we have outgoing state. And as you know, in topological quantum mechanics, you should put here homotopy. So what you really see here, you actually can see here the deformation of Q with the observables of type one and type two. And uh, it is uh, pretty interesting to collect them all. So if you have observables of type one, we should add here some uh, generating parameter. So it's interesting, but it is better to call this generating parameter theta. And then we would add the generating parameter T to observables of type two. Remember that when we studied one dimensional story, we basically were doing something like this. And uh, we wrote a so-called uh, generalized Morse formula. Generalized Morse formula was Okay, so so once again, so when I when I do it when I do things like this, I can say that I have Q, and Q is deformed by theta and t, and this is Q deformed, and uh, 
the main equation was n. That was depending on uh, theta and t. And the equation was that n square equals to zero. So this, uh, so this was the equation of topological quantum mechanics. Hey, what is n? So, so uh, <clears throat> so here I need to be a bit more accurate. What is M? Okay, so let me come back to this. So, uh, so I'll do the following. I'll keep this picture, mm -hmm. and I'll recall what happened in uh, well, what is n square equals to zero equation. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, Andrew, would it make sense to to make a, a little break at some point, or uh, I still uh, I still want uh, to to finish this mm -hmm. this piece. Mm -hmm. So there, it was one dimensional story that was related to R to the power N over R. Okay. And then, and then there was analog of the two dimensional story here with the configuration points on two dimensional something on the cylinder. Here, here these were points on the line. So we studied the following uh, differential form. E to the th plus dtg. And here we put some size. You see, I am sorry because since you see, for me, all this is in my head because I'm doing it constantly. Of course, I explained it several times, but I forget that I need to to pick it up from the passive in your mind. Sorry, DTG. So. Okay, I, uh, okay, let me put it like this. So here I have T12, T23. One, two, three. Here is T12, here is T23. Differences. This T12 and T23 are coordinates or R to the N over R. Here in this example, N equal to three. So this is a differential form. This I is closed. So Andre, it's not visible where you're uh, the very left side. So this I is closed. Mm -hmm. in the sense that Q plus DI equals to zero, okay? Mm -hmm. Similarly to the case that uh, I explained yesterday, I would like to put here T I one, Psi I one, Psi I two, Psi I three. 
So we have these numbers. And let me call these numbers n, i1, i2, i3. And of course, n's belong to endomorphisms of uh, the kernel of H. Okay? So, so, so I want. How, how did we suddenly come up with numbers? What, what, sorry, where are the numbers? So it's not numbers, it's this elements. This, this, okay. So, so, uh, so the, the, the correlator or whatever. I, yeah, I so, had for these insertions. Okay, sorry. So, sorry for calling them M. I need to find some other letter because M means that they are numbers. However, they are numbers only in special enumerative cases. Uh, so, Previously, I call these things C. Now I need to call this somehow new. Okay. But sorry, what's the difference of new and I had? Isn't it the same? New is the integral of I had oh, I see. over the fundamental side. I see. new i1 i n is like this so so here i am uh, playing the same game like i played before but only in the real case so i want to look for the I will, so since it's closed, I want to study the relations between new. And I find these relations under conditions that suppose C I C J commute. In this case, in this particular case, I can find the relations between numbers new. And these relations uh, could be given in the following way. Consider the integral of, I'll write it a bit non accurate, boundary of boundaries, this, of Rn over R of I. So this, so this is zero because of closeness. At the same time, it is integral of i. And here I have r on one over r. Here is integral of i. Here I have r on two of r. Because, uh, because of the generation. So the boundary here is when L1 points are here and L2 points are here. Okay? Mm -hmm. And of course, and this time interval is infinity. So this is the component of the boundary. So when points collide, it's not a boundary. And so in this particular case, in this particular case, 
we have a set of quadratic we have a set of quadratic uh, relations okay i'll and quadratic relations are like this i i1 i i2 equals i i2 equals i i1 so this is easy it just says that uh, commuting operators have commuting actions on homology however there are higher higher relations that look like sorry not i news news i integrate One, three, one equals the same with one and two interchange. You see very similar, very similar things. Now, How can we now how can we put put it all together? We introduce TI generating parameter. Such that the parity of TI plus parity of psi i. So psi has lower index is one mod two. Then one can check that these relations actually mean the following. Introduce new of T. So that is new i1 ti1 plus one half new i1 i2 ti1 ti2 plus etc one over k factorial new i1 ik and here is ti1 tik So it's interesting that these relations in terms of nu of t may be written as nu of t composition with nu of t equals to zero. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. So you may see that it is equation. Uh, I call it Morse for some reason, uh, but this is equation that new of t is a differential, and actually it is a shift in differential for. So actually it is a differential.
I mean this new. So you may ask. Uh, on, 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 our, on our regional space of states stands uh, power series? Yes, yes, yes. So, so this new of T is a differential. That comes from deformation. Q is going to Q plus Ti. Sorry, Ti psi i. That's why I wanted this condition. But at the moment, I just want to mention this. So what, so what I explained here, I explained here the deformed uh, topological uh, quantum mechanics, higher topological quantum mechanics. So you have deformation here and you have contraction here. Deformation and contraction are uh, irrelated, okay? Or equivalently, you may consider this. You may consider this as a, as a bi-complex and you compute the action of the second differential on say homology or contraction of the first. So in this case, it's on homology of the first or the whole homology of Q. And uh, and this is what you call uh, come from the so it's a double complex. It's just this higher differentials. Or you may look here that this is a differential, and you are looking at the induced infinity structure. So these are all the same. You may pick up the explanation that you prefer. However, it doesn't matter what is the explanation that you use. There is such a formula. So there is such a formula and uh, you may take your favorite explanation, okay? Mm -hmm. If you would like to understand this in terms of uh, induced uh, structure, you may do it you may consider do it like this. If, or if you would like to understand it in terms of uh, configuration space, it's also okay. Here is kind of the proof from differential forms. Alternatively, you can put here homotopy and no T integrals and check this equation explicitly. So one way or another way, you would have this. So the goal of my last uh, 10 minutes was to recall this fact. higher differentials of the double complex.
So I recalled the one dimensional story, closely related to two dimensional story. Now, let me make a statement and then there'll be a break. Now, in the loop story, There are two types of Psi. There is Psi I of the first type. And that is, and there is also, okay, that is Phi I. And there is Psi I of the second type. This is G minus Phi I. Now, here I put generating parameter ti and here theta i. Since these two are not independent size, but are related by the action of g minus, I want to keep it like this. So, So now mu, mu is a function of t theta. Mu is a function of t theta equals to zero. Okay? So this is equation number one. However, there is another equation. And this is an extra equation. This equation says that applied to nu equals to zero. If I, if I take a sum over i. And this second equation comes from the fact that G minus is commuting with G plus. That if you integrate over, over sigma, that uh, it commutes with uh, Okay, so 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 when I integrate over when I average over sigma, I will definitely have this equation. And what is good in one and two? You see that these news are differential forms. On the space of on the space spent by eyes.
And this is the condition that D nu is zero. So nu is DC. From this, we come here and we have the commutativity equation DC DC equals to zero. However, we have this commutativity equation for C being not a one form, for C being not a function, for C being a uh, general form. So this is actually for C that belongs to differential forms on formal disk. So zero component where C is functions uh, is uh, the commutativity equation. And here we have higher equations. So to see higher equations, we need to have more thetas, okay? And more thetas means that we need to put more observables of this type. Observables that are placed and not integrated. So it means that if we add observables of this type, one observables, then generating function of this one observables on the cylinder together with two observables and zero observables would satisfy the extended commutativity equation. So it's interesting to find out an enumerative problem that corresponds to this equation. And to study it. Okay, so I'll tell you this enumerative problem. So conjecture really. Consider problems of the following type. Map of CP1 into X. Here, there is point P1, P point P2, and the cycle. I, uh, I never use gamma, gamma. such that P1 goes to a cycle C1, such that P2 goes to a cycle C2, and the image of this gamma intersects with cycle C. So these are new enumerative problems. And I strongly suspect that these new enumerative problems would 
satisfy the extended commutativity equation. And I tell you that nobody studied this problem. So this science is like 20 years old, but not all uh, equations are studied there yet. And let me tell you why one may think that such thing happen. It's because uh, the target may have uh, higher operations. Of course, I understand that you will say that there is a theorem that the killer target doesn't have these higher operations, but it's not clear that they are absent. So, not only I explained to you the new enumerative problem, I also give you the would be very effective tool to compute relations between these numbers. So I wanted to admit this issue. But since we came to the question of, uh, of Morse theory on the loop space and the issue of cylinder, I decided that uh, you should know this too. So if you spend your time to imagine this picture with the cylinder, you need to take advantage of it. And after all, uh, people have to write papers. So uh, not everybody are like Kansevich, Manin, and Witten, who are writing papers on the breakthrough places. Okay. People should also uh, write papers on. Uh, on areas that are kind of missed by uh, genius people when they marched, marched through the answer, okay? Once again, I don't consider this problem as the most important problem, okay? For me, this problem is kind of uh, illustration of the meaning of uh, of uh, commutativity equation. But once we have it, it's a pity not to discuss it. And of course, this problem uh, should have a high genus generalization.
And once again, I would never pose a numerative problem for which I do not know the structure of an answer. But uh, since I know the structure of an answer, I cannot miss it, you see? Okay, so now, Pasha, I'm sorry. Now we will have a break. Pasha, mm, yes. do you see why I had to complete this sentence? Yeah, I think so. I think so. Mm -hmm. So these guys, these observables, may look a little bit like Wilson line like, so Wilson loop like observables or one observables in A model. So when we with Nikita were studying four-dimensional theory, we found, so in four-dimensional theory, there were two observables. That were the, that were the Nelson observables, okay? So they have, uh, so they were in co-dimension and uh, it was interesting to see what happens when they intersect and after all, what, what is going on? And there were nice formulas for them. In order to treat it in four dimensional story, it is good to have a two dimensional analog first. So this is the two dimensional analog together with with an equation. Now, now I make a break, okay?
Да, да, что? Ну, закажи, слушай, ну. Я ничего не хочу. Окей. Okay. Let me come back. Let me make even more remarks, okay, on this problem. And let me tell you that in particular Pasha knows the another incarnation of this problem. I want to make a remark. In the case of one observables like this, there is a correction term. And this correction term comes from the region when the differential form used in one observable hits P1. And this correction term is basically product of observable associated to P1 and observable associated to gamma. I'll, I'll write it like this. Let me put it like this. Zero observable to P1. Zero observable at point P2. And gamma is P2, P1. And something else. So correction is so let me write it zero observable at point P one omega one. Zero observable, point P2, omega 2, one observable along the line of form omega 1, 2. The correction term comes from the product omega 1, omega 1, 2. If this thing is not zero, and also if this thing is not zero.
it is actually a boundary term. Now, the second thing I want to mention. Second thing I want to mention is that there is an analogy of this observable. In 2D young mills. And of course, not only in 2D young mills, but also in uh, in Chen Simon's life series. Or I would like to say not to D, maybe BF. We know the Wilson loop observable. It's okay. There is a Wilson line observable. However, this is not gauge invariant. Because when A is shifted by DC, this observable is shifted by integral over gamma of DC by C at point P2 minus C at point P1. So it's not gauge invariant. However, we know how to correct it. So this is good, this is bad. Pasha, how to correct it? Put some ghosts at the endpoints. Very good. However, if we consider composite observable, integral of A along gamma, ghost at P1 and ghost at P2, <laughs> it is a good observable. <coughs> For some reason, Edward Witten forgot such observable. Actually, he forgets this observable because he never writes observables that, de that depend on C. So it's a special story. And in general, you can put, we can put here a more complicated observable not just A, but any function of C and take one descent, right? So take invariant function of A and C. A is one form, C is zero form. Decompose it. Extract. So invariant function, okay. D inverse over D argument, I don't know. DIA, DCA. So this is a one form. Integrate over gamma 
and put product of C's at point P1 and maybe product of C's at point P2. Okay, so here is a, here is a result of C's. We rarely have a lot of zero mode of C's to study this, but I'm just pointing you to, to such observables in gauge theory. <coughs> Okay, if you don't like gauge theory, you see you need a lot of C's, you need to insert somewhere a lot of B's. So maybe it's not the, the most natural thing to do. And maybe that's why you don't like study this in gauge theory. But this has an analog in the A module, so what is the analog of this? Say integral over gamma, differential for one gamma, omega one at P one, omega O, omega two, at P2 and take this O one observable. So there is this composite observable. Static relation of these. Remember that Edward Witten in gauge theory Studied Wilson graph observables. So here there is a role, there is a lot of thing to study. And in particular, if you have uh, CP one. You know some relations for these observables. <clears throat> so it is one thing about new observables that I wanted to tell you. Now, there is another thing that I would like to tell you. Let me come back to this space LM. I told you that here you have black points and white white points and white black points could uh, hit each other and white point do not. So you, so you may wonder what does this mean? What is the realization? And let me tell you that I already described to you one of the realization of this situation. Remember that if I had holomorphic map or or quasi holomorphic map from the manifold to say CP1 that this is equivalent to put here 
Black Points Label Together by Zero with Labels and Infinity. To find this is exactly to describe the map to CP1. So quasi holomorphic maps become configuration of points. Now, what does it mean? <coughs> that there are white points and black points do not fit that. White points may be considered points where you have a variation observable. Hmm? Actually, black points never hit white points. It means that that if you have as an observable Differential, differential form on C star in this particular model. You may pretty easily put it to this point. The thing that you have when map is such that zeros and infinities go there would be ill-defined. I mean the compactification. So you may consider maps, you may consider observables. For that are Define on compactification of C star. Then when zero comes here, namely pre image of zero, you may have a nice limit. Moreover, if zero and infinity would collide here it would not matter because uh, because in this setup we consider not exactly maps we consider maps we consider quasi maps that have evaluation at white points hmm? So here I'm saying something new. So previously, I studied uh, two cases. First case, quasi maps. Second case, maps. So dangerous thing was not so so what is dangerous if you go from map to quasi map it's okay if you are not evaluating anything there so here you can see intermediate setup so the space of maps 
turns out exactly the space whose cohomology somehow we have already studied. The difference is the color that you have here for black points. But there was a color. We, we, we put it before. We said that uh, we have something uh, that we called the, the space V. So V has a basis, in this case, infinity or zero, or in general case of toric manifold, the V may be considered just the, the set of compactifying the set of compactifying devices and at the same time we already know the topology here so we have toric topology of the space of maps of uh, of of no, I would not say maps the space of uh, allow that quasi maps. And now, you see, unfortunately, today I am a bit short in time. But I would like to put it like this. I would like to show you new observables. And uh, these new observables are in compactification of lots of mining space. And they happen in the following place. Just imagine. that zero goes here and another zero goes here. And the rest is outside. So what happens if the number of zeros here is different from uh, number of poles? How would we understand it? Once again, this corresponds to the map C, Z minus A1, Z minus A2, Z minus B1, Z minus B2. So consider this map. Now we are going to evaluate it only at zero or at infinity or at infinity. So let us see what is going on. So we can study what's going on when A1 and A2 go to zero. So by projective transformation, it's the same as to say that B1 and B2 go to infinity.
So actually it means that we have double zero at zero. So let us try to see how does this map looks from the point of view of the rest of the surface. Of course, from the rest of the surface, we see that something happens here. And this map has a meaning. And meaning of this map is that not only f of zero equals to zero, but also f prime of zero equals to zero. So it is a kind of a new. So it is a new map. It's a new enumerative observable. It is observable. So this observable says that you are tangent. So when, when it happens here, it means that in this place, we have tangency condition. On the one hand side. And this and this is not uh, evaluation map. It is something different. There is no differential form that you can evaluate here to reproduce this phenomenon. And actually, it turns out that here you are getting here we are getting psi classes And uh, next time, I'll tell you more about this psi class. By the way, before I'll tell you more, I'll tell, you, I'll tell, I'll tell something. I'll still tell something right now. It's why Tangency contains psi class. Tan so, so tangency means basically not only x equal to zero, but also dx equal to zero. To write down dx equal to zero, you need a tangent vector. To 
make it an observable. So tangency equation contain trivialization of the tangent space. And this is the origin of psi classes. And there is an algebra that relates everything together. So psi classes are not uh, just for uh, topological gravity, Edward Witten's conjecture. No, they appear naturally in uh, observables. So I want to make this remark. And I also want to make remark number three. So after I went into all this, I want to make remark number three. And remark number three is that there are also another loss of minus spaces. So the most useful are with two white points. There are lots of mining spaces with three white points, etc. One point is considered outgoing, and two points are considered incoming. One second. And then there are various factorizations here. In particular, there are this type of factorization. So this three point space and its cohomology are degenerated like this. And it is possible to write down similar equations. So actually, there are LM spaces that contain two letters, N, number of white points, and K, number of black points. So, When k equals to zero, Lm and zero are are Dirin Mumford spaces. Lm two n are sometimes called Lmn. But there are many spaces in between. And in order to see something, uh, and, uh, and there are consistency conditions, and all of them are quadratic equations. So in order to get something on the Lin Mumford spaces, you can start with this and go through these consistency conditions. At the moment, I don't want to go too much on this. But later, later, 
I would recall how these things are happen. So I explained you all this because we we touched this issue of uh, of LM spaces because. Uh, let me summarize. So summarizing. Relations for LM spaces may be considered as a loop version of the infinity relations coming from uh, topological quantum mechanics or from bicomplex with an extra generator uh, for the for the homology of uh, the loop. So it's one thing. Another thing is from this element spaces, we can prescribe the line observables. And I almost wrote you the formula that relates that relate uh, generating function for line observables, how this is related to commutativity equations. And this formula means that uh, basically that it is just a promotion of functions to differential forms. And of course we like where functions are promoted to differential forms, okay? So it's the second topic. The third topic is that LM spaces, that one of the realization of LM spaces is the spaces of admissible quasi maps. So where black points, the points that could collide, that are pre, pre images of divisors can collide, but it's not a problem because of relation observables are at white points that do not intersect. So, so this was so this is kind of a new setup. So, between quasi maps and uh, stable maps. There is this space. Fourth point. There are interesting regions in such space that correspond to these degenerated maps and uh, and in factorization we do not have evaluation observable. However, we have here a tangent observable. And this is to say that uh, there are tangent observables that contain psi classes for dong. You may see these tangent observables in the paper of Shelley with Costello. Well, not only just there, I, this psi class appears almost everywhere, I think. Yes, yes, but in particular, I mean, I mean, uh, in geometrical observables, okay. Mm. So, so, so you can see it this way. Yes, of course. Okay, it appears, it appears here, and in particular, in the mirror. Here we have e to the y. Here we have e to the y. Altogether, we have e to the two y. And this is not primitive not element of a good section. So that's how you get your society of descendants. You may see it from the mirror. So at some point we will come to this. Here I'm just opening the door to show you this. In uh, 
this type of presentation. And also, I said that with these LM spaces, you can uh, consider several white points, and still there are nice and interesting quadratic relations. So um, I have a question about that. Um, when you want to construct this topological field theory on this Riemann surfaces. No, it's, uh, at least it's still, still it's a sphere. Consider yes, it as a sphere. Uh, of course, genus is zero, but you have to require the sum of the framing numbers of the input should be equal to the sum of the framing numbers of the output. If you know what I mean in the math context, so, uh, you you want you want me to have framing here. No, I don't want to have yeah. framing here. Of course, not only just there. We have to put framings on the black points also. But I always thought that the black there are point... no framing at the yes, moment. Yes. Mm -hmm. There are no framings. Oh, okay, but. Um... Yes, yes, this is how I thought usually. The black points have well, framing zero, and that's why they receive this Hoch shield homology inputs. And the white points have framing number one, and that is why they have the Hoch shield cohomology inputs, which isn't. An... No, well, no, you I'm... see, I, I actually. Okay. Uh... Uh, I consider it differently. So we, we may we, we may discuss it tomorrow if it's possible for you to yeah, discuss I tomorrow. Think it's, I think it would be more proper. Okay, okay. Uh, anyway, I just want to say there's something okay, so, uh, that I can't understand directly right now. Okay, so let us do the let, here we have a discussion point, and that's exactly along the lines that we announced. So let us discuss black and white points tomorrow with you, okay? Okay. And for the rest, people just should know. People, people should just know that uh, there are similar quadratic relations where we have several numbers of white points and black points. Yeah, that that's true. Yes. So uh, and. Uh, and that's it. So with all these observables, that's it for today. And let me announce that uh, with all these degenerations and points, uh, we will add uh, equivariant stuff on the top of it. So later on, there will be equivariant volume of uh, these spaces that we will compute. There is a covariant volume of white and black sp spaces, not only on spheres, not only on compact, but also on non-compact, because it is possible to have things like this, one white point and set of black points, okay? So it is not a traditional model A space, but you can compute a covariant volume of this. And this would be exactly the two-dimensional analog of Nikrasov function. And so it's one thing. Another thing is that these psi classes uh, that correspond to spectral parameter, okay, would show up in the integrable system presentation that that would come uh, next week okay so we recalled almost everything so uh, okay, Andrei, so that's uh, it. Uh, yes uh, are we meeting in half an hour uh, that was with anton yeah, so I, I, I am ready in your room. Okay, very good, very good. Okay, see, see you later then. Mm -hmm. So in half an hour, yes? Okay.
So, so let me comment. I'm trying to show you a lot. And I am a bit uh, short here because in order to explain something, uh, it takes some time. So I'm trying to keep balance. Because while I like many white points, that's what I like. I don't think that everybody needs to know it. But still, let me make a comment about uh, one observables. You see, I will make not a mathematical comment, but a comment from mathematical physics. That when Edward Witten was studying topological theories, he used this one observables and nobody was doing this one observables except in two dimensional young mills uh, at higher genus. So in particular, but one observable had a very important uh, property. Namely, one observables typically intersect. And nobody even asks the question, how should people treat this intersection in type B model? I want to say nobody even asks this question. Say nothing to answer it. One may even think that uh, which, which you could just ignore the fact that they intersect. However, in the year 1996, I think, when uh, I and Nikita Nikrasov and Samson Shetashvili were uh, somehow competing with the collaboration of Gregory Moore and Edward Witten on Coulomb branch. It turned out that this question is a toy model for the following question. Suppose we have a manifold with a complex dimension equals to two. So Donaldson wrote down the two observables associated to surfaces. You consider, you take invariant polynomial like this, and you consider the two form. So you have two observables of this type. And typically they intersect. And then there was low energy. Sorry, Kulo. I forgot how to write Kulo. Something like this, Coulomb branch. And this was replaced by the two observables for the Coulomb branch.
And now it turned out that if you compute it here, the answer is not invariant under the electromagnetic duality, under abelian electromagnetic duality. And there is a necessity to put here contact term. And then there was a problem how to compute this contact term, how to get it. And uh, we found a way how to get it. You blow up this point, and they do not intersect anymore. However, you pay for it by uh, having, uh, by growing the second uh, cohomology. So it is computable. And then we also had a universality conjecture. And the universality conjecture was that when you have two surfaces that intersect at a point, and that when you have a point and four observable, they also intersect at a point, the contact term is the same. However, the contact term of the four observable on the point is nothing but the connection on the space of local observables while you are deforming theory by the four observables. So this is the four dimensional generalization of QOG site connection. And here is a tricky way how to compute it. And this should have analog in dimension two, where we have intersection, intersecting one observables and the contact term. That should also be QOG site connection. So we had all this in mind. However, we were a bit nervous. There was a lot of things that we had to do and we have to study this in some detail. But from that lesson, I remember that it is always good, always proper to study lower dimensional observables and in particular their intersections. That's why after Pavel asked me about the trajectories of the loop space, I just, I finally decided to put in this story about uh, line observables and two-dimensional theory. Say nothing that there is also a place for small result here. because I'm always trying to find uh, lower dimensional analogs of different phenomena. And by the way, it was, uh, this thing was exactly the point when uh, I and Nikita took different ways. So, I was thinking about cytotype connection and Nikita went into equivariant stuff where he, where he became very successful. Still, still I remember all this and nobody properly settled this issue in dimension four, neither Greg Moore 
who has uh, a program, so-called of coupling of uh, super young mills to topological gravity. So that's how, how he calls it. Or trying to understand uh, what is the analog of Deline Mumford space. It is one of the reasons why, why you see I'm messing up with uh, with all these pictures. Actually, main reason. Because uh, I actually want to find analogs of LM spaces and all these phenomena and psi classes in complex dimension two. That is a, that is in real dimension four. And this is what is definitely missing in uh, Nikrasov approach. And that is something that uh, people do not realize. Um, Andre, can I ask a probably, I don't know, maybe unrelated question to those LM spaces? Sure. Any questions? Um, so you said, okay, so the white points, they're probably not supposed to collide, but the black points, they're supposed to collide. And then the compactification... They, they may collide. They may, they may, yes. And the compactification there is that you kind of get, um, yeah, these, these uh, partitions of the black points, right? Yes. And can you, or is it reasonable to kind of consider an, another compactification, like an Axelrod Singer type compactification where one kind of um, uh, keeps track of how the black points collide? Actually, actually, I don't see it. So it would be important. It would be important. Would I, okay, it, of course it depends. Uh, what do you mean by black points? What, how you see the origin of them? Mm -hmm. I see the origin as a pre-images of compactifying divisor. Okay. So, so uh, if I if black points collide, mm -hmm. if black points collide, it is reasonable to see something only if I put a white white point here, mm -hmm. because white point can see how exactly they collide the fine structure because white point for me is something that keeps evaluation mm -hmm. okay so in order to watch what is going on you should put something for whom it's important how do they collide okay but it's exactly what happens in these compactifications so look just imagine you have black points that are colliding and you put white point observing. Mm -hmm. So what does it mean? You blow up the full, the full picture. So you have this white point that was observing these black points mm -hmm. that are kind of colliding. Okay, I see. And all this, okay, small but prominent group of points is attached to the rest of the world should buy a white point. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, so would you have only one white white point? It is, uh, it is original loss of money in space. Would you have several white points? It will be like this. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, so here you see the detail. So to be clear, is that uh, is that configuration is when black points collide to white white points or black points collide to each other together. Mm -hmm. yeah, so uh, so if you have this like with two point, okay. So what does this look like 
from the point of view of the rest of the surface. Two black points and white point collide together. Okay. Yeah. This one means that black point collides with white point. Okay. So, so for the rest of the surface, everything happens here. So if if then, you hear, here we see details of what is going on. So then what happens that black points collide each other but doesn't touch? It doesn't, white. White. It doesn't matter. So in this case, something happens here. So when two black points collide, yes, maybe something happens. Yes. But there is no one who can see <coughs> that there is no map here. No, 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 uh, no I, one. Uh, okay, okay. <laughs> it's okay. So actually, you need to have evaluation only at places where we have evaluation observables. So, so, then, so original original approach was like this: you should consider a map. Why should you consider a map? You should consider a map everywhere. Okay, okay. So I thought that I... black points carries an observable also, but um, uh, it, it sounds like. Well, well, black point, so the question is what are black points? If there are pre images of divisor, yes. It, it, it's something. If they collide, like. It's of, oh, yeah, yes. So they say something if that. Image, if pre image of zero and infinity collides, Hmm. Okay, so what? How did how does it affect the rest? Actually, it doesn't affect the rest. Ah, okay. I see. I see. Well, so it's so in this case you can just cancel because the map is z minus a, z minus b. If z is not a or b, when a equals to b, you just cancel. Oh, okay, okay. I see. I see. However, if Z, A and B equal to each other, you have three numbers. So you have C3. Okay? And everything goes to zero. Okay, so, so there is a position where it happens. So we can take B equal to zero, for example, or or we can take z equal to zero. Because there is also, so when two black points, pre image of zero, infinity, and, and white point, so this configuration has one translational mode. And there is also a relative c square. So there is zero in c square. But we need to blow it up. Okay. So it's really not a general picture. It's it is for JLSM only, right? Like the quasi map, quasi maps, right? Yes, yes, yes. But of course, the question. You are right. The question is, what is the origin of black points? So yeah, one can yeah. define it uh, from head just axiomatically. There are black points. The question is, why do we need black points? Well, what is the origin of them in some examples? So the origin of black points are, are these, uh, in particular, in this historic variety case. Isn't so it, I would uh, say, plutonic yeah. targets. Isn't it a vortex? What? Is a, is it, is it, you may consider them also as vortices. So it depends how you look at this. Of these compactifying devices. So if you if you consider the target as as this one as a tube compactified, then this circle shrinks. So it means that it's a vortex. 
So yes. when you put put this thing, uh, fi, there is no notion of phi coordinate. Phi coordinate. Mm -hmm. So how? So it is so longitude. So there is no longitude on the north or south poles. Okay. It means that it is a vortex. No angle. But uh, it may happen that this picture with black and white points uh, has other applications. So it's kind of a general construction applications. And uh, also, I want uh, to generalize this lots of money and spaces to uh, surfaces. So I actually want to want to say that in complex dimension two, there should be not only white points, but also white uh, curves, white divisors. So the, it would be a story of white divisors, black points and, and black divisors, and maybe also white points. So it would be It, 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 in this way, it will be more interesting. Okay, I see. Okay. So it's my dissatisfaction with this loss of money and spaces. They, they, they look like uh, they happen only in complex dimension one. And of course, we know that uh, there should be this algebra of infrared equation that would replace new square equal to zero equation. We have an insight. New square equal to zero equation that I explained today, it's in complex dimension, real complex equal to one should be replaced by algebra of the infrared equations, L infinity. And this is explained in the work of Suhan. So he considers the R version. He considered two more theory. And the degeneration of uh, of fibers, not fibers. So in more theory, there is the generation of trajectories. And here, uh, and he studied the generation of by trajectories. Trajectory breaks like this. So now this is two dimensional trajectory. And do you know how two-dimensional trajectory typically breaks? It can easily break like this. And this breaking is uh, So this is one dimensional story. Interval breaks into two intervals. Triangle can break like this. So polygon breaks even more interestingly. So this breaking of polygons is the core of the algebra of uh, four dimensional mirror. So this is uh, my uh, conjecture for many years. It's because I asked Sukhanov to study the generations in uh, higher Morse theory. Okay, thanks. Thanks. Good. <laughs> but published in the algebra of the infrared by uh, Witten, uh, Gayotto, and Moore, and also studied by Kansevich Kapranov. 
this algebra of the infrared. Well, that's it. So, don't. So, so let us discuss white and black tomorrow. Okay. But uh, so. Or maybe you are still busy. I don't know. Yeah, actually, that's what I'm uh, trying to say. <laughs> uh, okay. So, if, so if you are busy, we can find uh, another time to discuss. It. So actually, uh, I just organized some sort of seminars in this April, and it will be uh, there for like two weeks. Okay. Yeah. So, so, so well, let, let, let us postpone, and yes, we will come. I think I'm, but I think I'm available next week. So maybe okay. skip tomorrow seminar and resume next week, and then we're gonna talk about this white and black, the difference between white and black, and the framing okay. that I just mentioned. Wait, by the way, now it's not politically correct to talk about difference between white and black. Oh, uh, <laughs> we will be banned on YouTube. <laughs> OK, so there's no difference. Uh, how should I say? I don't know. <laughs> I hope I didn't make a mistake. Anyway. <laughs> OK. Yeah. So. And okay, so see you next, yeah, see you next Wednesday. Ah, okay. good. So now I know the slogan Black Lines Matter BLM. Ah. <laughs> Black <lines. Okay. laughs> yes, because this, these are vortex strings, black lines. Black lines matter, so okay. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. ah. uh. No, no, it's, <laughs> so he, it has to be it has to be published in this way. Black lines matter. So uh, vortex tree. A uh, really <laughs> catchy title if it becomes a paper of some, some sort of thing. Yeah, I agree. Well, just to see, just a short remark. But you see, if there is a title, black lines matter. It's <laughs> actually I, I I saw this kind of. Observable was integrated over line in some FLIR theories, like, but we draw lines on a disk, not on a sphere, but th that that's the difference, but. Okay, I, good. Yeah, so, so you draw the line. So, yeah. uh, but here it's not just to draw a line. It's, uh, there was a prediction. I see, I see. Hmm. On, on correlators. Yeah, so is... Maybe we can talk about it more later. Yeah. Yes, so if so, it sounds very interesting. See, you see, uh, Donk, please try to understand me. That's why I am doing it this way. Okay. I am uh, explaining something, uh, maybe not in full detail, but if somebody has something from his experience, we can go into detail with a person who is interested. Okay. Okay. So then, see you next Wednesday. And thank you for today. Okay, so see you next Wednesday. Okay. Thanks a lot. So see you next Wednesday. Thank you. Okay. See you.